Hi everybody, this is Joe Domaleski, KI4ASK, and we are going to work a pass of the International Space Station using APRS and the Kenwood D-72 radio. Before we work the International Space Station, let's try a terrestrial APRS packet. I'm going to press the beacon button. It's gonna transmit a packet. And my position was digipeded off the AB4KN-2 digipeter, which is about six miles away. You can also see the GPS indicator is blinking, which means I have the GPS turned on for a position report. And I already have the APRS frequency programmed in, but I'm going to hit the monitor button. And you can see 144.390, which is the APRS frequency. I've also got the TNC turned on and it says APRS 1-2, which stands for 1200 baud APRS. Transmit level is set to high. I do recommend high power when using APRS. Over some of the settings to make this work with the ISS. First of all, I have changed the frequency. I already have a memory location set up for the frequency, but it's 145.825 megahertz. I already have the TNC turned on. You press the TNC button and it says APRS 1-2 for APRS 1200 baud. Let's look at the menu system and see what needs to be press set up the there. menu button and there's APRS. And let's just go through some of the settings here. I'm just gonna stop on the ones that actually are relevant to work in the ISS. I do have some phrases set up in here that just allows me to quickly send messages. I won't go through all of those. Auto reply, you can leave that off. I have it on. Group filter, I don't have any filters set. Sound, I do have the radio set to beep at me anytime it receives something. The display area is fine, the units. Okay, basic setup here, I've got my call sign. KI4ASK, I'm using a dash seven for a handheld unit. Internal TNC, I've got set to the A band. You can use the B band. I also, this is kind of important, I have the DCD turned off. Basically that uh, prohibits you from keying up on another signal. Since the signals can be a little weak coming off the ISS, I have chosen to ignore that. You, you can turn it on, but I recommend leaving it off. Com port's not applicable. That's not applicable. Position, I do have it set so that I could, without the GPS, just use a hard-coded GPS coordinate. This is actually the coordinates of my house, but I'm gonna use the GPS. The way this radio works is if you have the GPS turned on, it'll use that. If you have it turned off, it'll have what you have set here. You have several settings you can use. Beacon info. You can leave that on. Position, comment, and service. Status text. I am going to change that. Right now I have it set to say Joe on the go. So let's try to change that. Hit the uh, jog dial here and pick number one here. And then I'm going to rotate the knob. I have already have one set here that says Joe in Atlanta via ISS Echo Mike 73, which is my grid. This is a little confusing on this radio. Hit the asterisk button to select it. You see it's got an asterisk next to it. And now we're good to go on the status text. Moving right along to the other settings. Let me go back. QSY frequency, uh, if you have the other VFO turned on, this will also let the other station know what frequency you might be listening on. That's not really applicable for the ISS. I don't have any packet filtering on. I'm using the Kenwood symbol as my icon. There's a lot of different symbols you can use in here. Sometimes I'll use the, uh, the, the running man symbol or a satellite or something else. You can really just pick whatever you want. Transmit beacon. I'm actually going to manually beacon, but I've got this let, uh, set to auto. Algorithm, you don't really need that. Smart beaconing, we're not gonna. Okay, packet path. Other than frequency, this is probably the second most important setting. I've got it set currently to the default of new-n. 
that means that the packets are going to do two hops. That's the, probably the most commonly used setting for terrestrial-based APRS. But I need to change that. So let me select packet path and the type here. And I'm going to scroll over to other. I have entered in previously ARISS, -S, which is the standard. That's the packet path that we need to make this work. Otherwise, the ISS DigiPeter will ignore your packets. And once again, I'm going to hit the asterisk to select that. You can see it's put an asterisk next to it. And now we're good to go on packet path. Network, just leave that alone. I don't have a weather station connected up. And that's it for the settings. So to summarize, the main thing is you want to make sure you're on the right frequency, 145.825, that your packet path is... ARIS, A-R-I-S-S, -S, and 1200 baud APRS on the TNC, and GPS enabled. Okay, the other thing I've done with the uh, Kenwood THD72 radio, I've put a BNC connect adapter on it. That's so I can connect it up to my Yagi. Okay, antenna. here's my trusty dual band Yagi antenna. You've seen this in other videos. We're only going to use the two meter portion of this Yagi. Uh, it's two meters up and down, which are the longer elements here. So there's the feed line and it terminates to a B and C connector. And that's what I'm going to attach to the radio. I'm leaving the 70 centimeter elements unconnected because they won't be used for this. And then I'll just use this Yagi antenna to track the trajectory of the ISS. I have some other YouTube videos where I work APRS on the International Space Station. Typically, I'm using the Kenwood THD-74, which is newer than this D-72 I have. Of course, the 74 is being replaced by the Kenwood D-75, which has just been announced. I also have a Yezu FT-3, which does APRS, and I have worked the International Space Station with that. Of course, there's a newer model to that radio as well the FT-5, but for today's demonstration, we're going to show the Kenwood THD-72. The other part of my toolkit is tracking software. Once again, I am using the iOS GoSat Watch application. That's the planned pass of the ISS. At its peak, it should be 73 degrees overhead. That's nearly overhead. And that's where it's currently at. So it's going to approach my location here in Atlanta from the northwest and finish its path across my vantage point to the southeast. So let's get in position and see if we can work APRS on the International Space Station. Did you? And there's a packet from the ISS itself, RS0 ISS. See if we can transmit a packet. There, there's my position. And there's another one from WA. Uh, there, are, their packets are coming in good now. Now, if I want to send somebody a message, what I can do is highlight their call sign, hit the message button. I've pre-programmed in some user phrases. So let's use this one here. Select that. And then I can send Okay, it. now that the pass is over, let's look at a list of some of the stations we heard. I can hit the list button here, and you can see some of the, uh, the stations. I can scroll right. through them. AB5XK, we received WA0D several times. If I hit the jog dial to the right, I can scroll through information about this station. 686 miles to my west. That's pretty good. Wouldn't get that normally from a regular terrestrial APRS system. There's the space station packet again. They're running a TMD-710. Eris, International Space Station. I think they have this hard-coded. I don't think it's actually 5,843 miles away. It's 
Some other stations, Whiskey Nine, Quebec, Oscar. Just 60 miles away. Satellite gate has his email address, 520 miles away. That's pretty good. K7MT. Helena, Montana. That's a good ways from where I'm at here in Atlanta. 1,700 miles away. And I didn't get a response to the message that I sent. Uh, that sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't on the satellite pass. But had I received one, if I hit the message button, it would have showed up here. This is the one that was outbound. Those are some other messages I sent some friends of mine earlier today on terrestrial APRS. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. Now you can see how easy it is to work APRS using the DigiPeter on board the International Space Station using a Kenwood THD72 radio. I have worked it using a whip antenna but a Yagi antenna does make it a little bit easier and more effective to be heard and pick up signals. So until next time, 7-3, I'm Joe, KI4ASK in Atlanta. We'll see you soon. Uh-oh, it's starting to rain. Summertime in Georgia. It's raining, so Max, the girl cat, is hiding underneath my wife's car. Hello, Max. Yes, and there goes my wife. Bye, MC. There goes my wife, KI4HHI.